Hi, my dear Astro family. Today we are going to be speaking about the upcoming new moon in the sign of Aquarius, which will be taking place on the 31st of January or the 1st of February, depending where you are. This new moon is brilliant to set intentions for long-term goals. What we will be actually covering today is something to do with the new moon conjunction to uh, Saturn and at the same time it's squaring Uranus also so we will be discovering those the potential meaning of those but also we will be looking at uh, a little bit uh, a new asteroid which we haven't spoken about and that's going to be Maki Maki because this new moon is actually trining that, but it's also trining Lilith, so worth mentioning, but there is an in-conjunction or, um, uh, yeah, an in-conjunction to Orcus as well in the sign of Virgo. So there is loads to cover today. And plus, uh, we will be touching base a little bit on the uh, North Node and the Pluto trine also, because it is playing um, a significant role, uh, especially in February, but my intention is to make a separate video about that for you. Now, um, a couple of announcements. Recently, actually this weekend, I started doing a two-part series about the North Node transits through houses, as well as North Node uh, transiting certain planets in your chart so it's not late to actually sign up for that because what we did is we went through all the possible meanings of north node and the south node in a chart then we looked at the possible meaning of north node and south node in the sign of scorpio and taurus briefly we looked at some of the eclipse charts and then we started going through what north node and South Node can indicate in certain houses. So if you wanna be digging a little bit deeper into uh, 2022 and 2023, you might wanna be checking that course out. So without any further ado, let's get started with this uh, very unique uh, new moon. So as I mentioned, it's going to be taking place on 12 degree and 19 minutes in the sign of Aquarius on the 31st of January or 1st of February. Now, this is the second decan of Aquarius, so it is falling onto Gemini territories and also Gemini what as well. So Mercury is playing a significant role. And that is the reason why uh, we are looking at the Pluto trine North Node also because uh, Mercury and Pluto are in conjunction at the moment. Now, uh, this new moon is actually reactivating the Saturn-Uranus square, which has been going on for a while. So obviously it really peaked a few times in 2021. So reactivating that kind of energy there, which could bring in something to do with uh, being rebellious, but also leaving the past behind, or how to kind of cut the chains off when it comes to the Saturn and the Uranus kind of push and pull energy, kind of being dragged into two different directions. But what's interesting this time around is that Saturn is on 15 degree, and it hasn't been here just yet since it entered the sign of Aquarius. So it kind of has entered a new territory at the moment. Uranus, it's uh, squaring, it's on 10 degree at the moment, and it has already been here. So whatever we kind of try to kind of liberate ourselves from or cut ties from, it's not something which is new. So, um, so some type of new territories, how I may imagine this is that Saturn as, for instance, the social distancing in the sign of Aquarius, maybe some type of new regulation which are coming up. And of course, Uranus is still in the same territories. It needs to kind of reach the 13th degree before it kind of um, leaps into something new. So therefore, um, um, the frustration might be staying the same, but maybe some new um social distancing or rules coming up around science or just overall in the world but we're gonna uh, be diving a little bit deeper into that so the new moons are 
kind of like a quiet period to start with because it does talk about a, a phase of a growth or somehow the regrowth overall. This is the very first stage of a moon because it's eventually going to start growing its light. So it's something to do with progression in a sense. But progression in a slow and innovative way because it's in a fixed sign, which tends to be sometimes a little bit stubborn, resilient about any type of climate change overall. So one thing which this new moon is definitely bringing our attention to is, you know, whether your external and your internal worlds look alike or they are completely somehow different. So it's kind of like opening up to new possibilities. Uh, because this is the very first phase of the moon, it does talk about new cycles, new beginnings, kind of like a fresh start overall. When there is a new moon happening, then basically the sun and the moon are in conjunction, which means that the moon is actually, um, or part of the moon is not visible from the earth. So it's kind of like a thin veil of shadow, what it kind of represents. So therefore, it is always bringing our attention to what is going on in the subconscious. Uh, some type of clearance, some type of, especially in the sign of Aqu Aquarius, which is kind of like resetting your mindset uh, about something or allowing, opening up some of the portals. So further exciting new knowledge can actually pop into your life. New moons are typically kind of like a high priestess type of energy when we choose the tarot cards. So, and the high priestess is very much about the overlap between our conscious and subconscious minds. Something to do with using our intuition, but being physically aware also, but it does talk about some, uh, to a certain extent, some psychic development. So, you know, the fact that new moon is falling into uh, the sign of Aquarius, you know, it, it might be asking you the question, in what ways are you interested in the world? Or when it comes to your friends, when it comes to certain type of groups, organizations and community, are you actually way too much interested in them? Or maybe you're going to have to somehow distance yourself from them a little bit. Because there is Saturn there, and Saturn typically about something which is weighing on us. Kind of like imagine that I'm trying to climb a mountain with a huge rock on my back, right? So obviously it's something which is going to make it difficult to start fresh or to actually allowing us to have a greater intuition or psychic awareness overall. But Saturn, yes, it wants to crystallize, it wants to build something. It's about sustainability. So in order for us to build something new, Aquarius, Saturn as the building, the construction work, in a sense, we need to be able to receive constructive criticism from our friends, but also we need to be practicing an emotional distance as well at the same time, that my judgment will be clear about whatever the topic is in your life. So with Saturn, it's, some, it's something to do with our long-term goals. It's work-related. So it is asking you to kind of come up with new innovative approaches, how you want to be reaching your goals. And are you going to be reaching them? Or actually, are you going to be staying somehow in your fear zone, in your shadow world, and uh, you are not going to be tackling those issues. And this is what Saturn conjunction talks about, but it is what um, actually Orcus and Lilith are really uh, mentioning to you also. So with Lilith trining, you know, we have got an invitation to start thinking about the darker side of life a little bit. Or maybe you see things in a very stormy way. Uh, by the way, this Lilith actually can bring some huge storms uh, in the world also, but the major message is to somehow tap into the dark side of yours um, and looking at it, how to overcome some of your internal fears so that you can manifest something externally. And um, it is actually in the sign of Gemini, which does talk about mental, mental frustration, does talk about, let's say, the ability or the disability or the incapability, the right word, 
uh, of uh, not being able to tap travel or not being able to say out loud what I want to, or it could talk about that I'm not being able to sell something or, or just that not having the right knowledge or having the knowledge, but it's useless without sharing it. So what's the point in having that? So, but on a very deeper level, this is really much talking about knowing your own emotional depth, knowing your own inner truth that it counts. So there is definitely an invitation here to let go of some of your fear um, that you might have got just a little knowledge about, and it's time to, um, to, to actually get to know a little bit more about yourself. You might feel that the surroundings, the environment is actually doesn't appreciate your knowledge overall, or maybe you are afraid of expressing yourself. Maybe uh, you are in a foreign country, you don't speak the language and I don't know, you know, how to verbalize what I really feel inside. So it kind of indicates to kind of learn new vocabulary, to kind of connect somehow with your secrets and taboos could be actually quite important with this. But um, going back to this Saturn alignment a little bit. So, you know, with Saturn, typically it's about the important goals. It shows something in your chart which you must focus on to dedicate time, money and effort to it. Knowing that uh, nothing is coming easy into our life and then we kind of in the sign of Aquarius we do need to take some risk sometimes so with Saturn we can focus way too much on the burdens the hardship uh, in our lives and then we tend to be kind of wallowing in our pain so how you are going to be cutting the chains of uh, your hands and arms and that's where Uranus is actually coming into the picture because it's squaring in the sign of Taurus which is very much talking about knowing your self-worth getting out of your comfort zone knowing that something you kind of you have got a tendency to hide behind uh, kind of like a safety circle overall and knowing that the safety circle or the inner circle I'm having around me also has got their own issues too. So I cannot always rely on. So what Uranus um, and the Aquarian energy wants us is to make some changes, to renew our long-term goals, to free yourself up from something. Uh, Saturn is the planet of responsibility. The blockage is the fears. So maybe some of the responsibilities, obligations become a burden. And I just want to be running away from that. Now, with uh, Uranus being in a sign of Taurus, it could actually talk about money, financial obligations, or food supplies that, oh, I have to be working in catering, or I have to be working because I need to put food on the table. But it could also talk about ways of changing our habits and perspectives, or our values overall, how we approach certain things. Maybe probably, in a sense, it talks about business opportunities. Uh, Taurus, uh, um, Uranus can kind of talk about new innovative ways of actually making money. So where does this money can be coming from? And maybe you are invited to kind of discover your talents. Uh, maybe you are also invited to kind of look at who is trying to put burden on you. Is that the world? You kind of fear that the world is against you. Or is that a, a friend of yours or someone in the community or someone I commute with from time to time? So you've got loads of clearance to do here. Both Aquarius and Taurus are fixed signs. So that talks about stubbornness, safety net, uh, kind of like slow to progress. They are very resilient, but afraid to change. So the major question here is that what are you afraid to, what are you afraid of? Um, Saturn as the planet of time, it is actually telling you this time around that it's time to change. It's time to modify your goals. You're gonna have to practice some adaptability, versatility uh, in this case. Saturn can also indicate that you are tired or burnt out, 
And Uranus is coming into the picture to kind of electrify your energy level a little bit. Uranus shocks us, electrifying us. It wants to liberate us from something. It wants to kind of um, tap into a higher knowledge, which is going to be serving you in a long run. The fact that Saturn is in the sign of Aquarius, Aquarius is a very great problem solving sign actually. So the major message here is to attack problems from a new angle, new perspective, somehow thinking outside of the box and how am I going to be adapting to new situation? So probably uh, plenty of you uh, will be affected in a sense uh, from a... Um, from a work perspective, because at the end of the day, um, Saturn um, represents work and Aquarius represents our long-term goals. So that's something to be actually uh, being aware of. Now, another thing which I think is a huge message here, Aquarius is said to be an emotionally distant sign. However, I think it's a very emotional sign because it's the water bearer. But the bearing kind of indicates that the emotions, water, to bear sometimes is a burden. So it tells you to kind of separate yourselves from, from any type of distractions, especially emotional distractions in life, and uh, try to create a hopeful vision for future. Or it can tell you to sometimes give yourself a break, slow down a little bit, maybe consult with some friends, advisory people, Aquarius in your life, so that you can gain more clarity, Aquarius. Aquarius represents the higher mind overall. It's kind of like the downloadable information from the sky. Uranus represents the sky. So somehow emotional distance is necessary to kind of reset your goals. Now in the world, it's very possible that there is going to be new rules around social distancing or uh, maybe some uh, restrictions will be finishing and the new ones will be implementing. Or maybe some of the social distancings will be kind of lifted up. Now, one of the reasons why I believe, because Saturn definitely had the upper hand in 2021, but I think in 2022, it's more likely Uranus is going to take over. So, you know, uh, which could indicate that I'm breaking away from the past. Most probably when Uranus actually hits 13 degree and we're going to have the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction also. So that's actually very possible in my opinion. Um, now, one other thing which I kind of wanted to talk about is that how to work with this new moon energy, because it can bring up a question of wanting to give a, a hand, a helping hand to somehow a community, or what past experiences do you feel attached to, and then how you can release some of those attachments. Uh, what are the emotions, emotions which are actually surrounding you? Or the fact that Uranus is still in a familiar place, but Saturn has entered into new territories. You know, how much you wallow in, um, in the past, in a sense, or what type of new skills do you have? Are you looking to study or develop something in your life? How will you kind of broaden your horizon? Um, do you have some type of healthy or unhealthy level of attachment and detachment to certain things. Maybe it's a kind of like a, a summary point where I kind of realize that I haven't really reached something which I kind of try to. So I need to be actually kind of pushing the gas pedal overall. Um, and you might want to be looking at where the Aquarius shows up in your natal chart. How do you connect to that part of your chart? So sometimes what happens with the Saturn is that we kind of make a mistake and then we tend to be talking down on ourselves or we tend to be blaming ourselves. So watch out for that too, because Saturn is kind of like a hard ass planet. It can be very hard on us from time to time. And it might be telling you that, you know what, there is no shame in asking for help. What can you lose? You might get a no, but you might get a very nice uh, yes from someone. So it's about in what ways are you going to be more, uh, moving forward, slowly building up something for uh, the long-term future. 
or maybe looking at what part of your life has changed last year and then how I'm going to be moving away from that now. What matters to you in the long run? So these are very significant topics here. Now, um, and as I said, this new moon is definitely shining light on the lockdown. Uh, plus also it's lining shi uh, shining light on kind of building like a new future or new society overall. So um, it on a world scale, it could really bring further unstable earth or kind of like weather events into our lives. Some cyber attacks are very possible or let's see how it plays out when it comes to the financial system or something to do with the food supply. There could be some type of disruption around that. And then how I'm going to be tackling that. Especially, I think this could be the topic because the North Node at the moment is in conjunction to Ceres, which on one hand is really asking you to look at how you're going to be nurturing yourself, but it does really talk about agricultural matters too. And uh, Mars is actually in trying to Uranus, so it could really show plenty of awakening. It really energizes Uranus, kind of like it, it's trying to give courage to Uranus. So that's actually very exciting energy, in my opinion. Now, another uh, interesting energy which is involved, involved here is the Mackie Mackie, which is written as Make Make, actually, but it's uh, called Mackie Mackie, which is currently on nine degrees of Libra. Now, if you want to be looking up where your Mackie Mackie is, then it's S logical number is 136472. So you're just going to be have to, uh, you have to be adding it into the additional object box on us.com and then it will be popping up in your chart. Now, uh, Mackie Mackie is actually very much about uh, ecological and economical disasters and it, it somehow associated, associated with plagues also. It's, a, uh, it's very similar to Humea, which I kind of um, spoke about uh, last time, just is the male version of that. Now, uh, uh, Meki Meki takes approximately about 310 years to go around the zodiacal signs. And Meki Meki somehow symbolizes a connection with the environmental issues or something kind of like the earth, a kind of like troubled times and energies in regards to the earth and the experiences. It's kind of like um, how much we love uh, our natural world. And also it kind of activates or talks about activism associated with defending the environment. So somehow a profound connection to nature uh, and natural disasters overall. So this could really talk about some scientific awareness about what is the earth going through, but also, as I said, it kind of re uh, represents plague as well. So definitely it's going to be bringing up uh, the pandemic somehow. Um, what's interesting is that uh, Mackie Mackie and Humeya is always kind of 20 to 40 degrees separation from each other. And this is the male god uh, of Humeya. So therefore the male energy is a little bit more about the militant type of energy. It's about the wisdom of the nature, we also can say. It's, adv it's about advancement in regards to earthly issues. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Mackie Mackie was very prominent uh, um, with some scientific uh, technological advancements in the 1500s and also around the um, Industrial Revolution in the 18th century. They were actually Uranus and Mackie Mackie, I think they were opposing each other. The next time when it's going to be making a significant, oh, and then also it was very prominent in 2008 as well. Uh, I think it was Uranus and um, uh, Mackie Mackie opposition also. Um, yes, it was because Uranus uh, was um, entering um, uh, Aries. 
So, and of course, we had kind of like a little bit of a blimps, right, in the economic situation. So the next time when uh, Uranus and uh, Mackie Mackie will be actually having a configuration, and that's going to be happening with Neptune and Pluto, uh, it's going to be 2027. And uh, that's going to be uh, around for a couple of years, actually. So probably it will allow us to have a little bit of a glimpse into the upcom upcoming one decade. But anyway, when, when the time comes uh, closer, then I will be actually talking about that too. So, and then another thing which I mentioned here at the beginning of the video is that the, um, the um, new moon is having a very tight in conjunction, which is 150 degree aspect to this new moon. And uh, that's going to be Orcus. Now, Orcus is a kind of like a Plutonian object, really. Uh, uh, a Plutonian trans-Neptunian object. It's a dwarf planet. We also call it as a little Plutino. Um, it, it takes about 245 years, like orbital period for it. And it really represents the subconscious mind. It's about... Um, it's about uh, underworld, it's about your subconscious matters, because the conscious mind is something what we are aware of, but the subconscious is something which is kind of like we are not aware of. And uh, so Orcus is something to do with curses or being punished, especially the, uh, being punished for breaking our oath or commitment. It actually represents swearing or kind of like the punisher of the condemned overall. Um, so this could really talk about somehow coming up with rules which are going to be uh, punishing people who are not doing certain things, not following certain type of rules, which could make people kind of outrageous and they're going to be swearing, cursing and so forth. But on a internal level, this is really talking about the hidden truth, the truth you hide from yourself. Actually, it's kind of like a Freudian slip type of energy. Uh, Orcus is something which is not a factual truth. Factual truth is more Mercury. This is more about a deeper spiritual truth, something which is your subconscious for subconscious is kind of trying to force out of your mind. It's about spiritual honesty, but it represents broken promises also. So maybe someone promised something to me, they didn't live up to it, and then I get very agitated about it. Uh, it Orca shows in what ways you lie to yourself or uh, you lie to others, in a sense. So definitely this could be bringing up some secrets, some, um, some issues, some taboos, which we have not been aware of on a personal and on a collective level also. Uh, so Orcus is similar a little bit to Pluto in a sense, kind of like the counterpart of Pluto. So Pluto shows the issues which are manipulating you and Orcus can show what actually triggers those. Uh, so let's say Pluto is in the sixth house, I'm afraid or uh, afraid of being sick. And Orcus is, let's say, in the first house and uh, that is getting triggered, let's say, by relationship topics, for instance, and so forth. Okay. So somehow Orcus is providing the issues to Pluto, but also that's the kind of like a healing from it too. It talks about confession, psychological uh, projections onto others. Uh, and this is going to be a topic because Pluto and Mercury in this chart, as you can see, are having a conjunction, which is about being analytical, which is about a truth serum, asking the right questions, kind of like having those spoken questions overall. Uh, it's kind of like the leak of an information overall. So probably we're going to have plenty of headlines about some certain secrets, powers, crisis situations overall 
you know, uh, so it will be actually interesting to see. But Orcus is also related to animals and plants, actually, who can kind of survive anything. So I think it wants you to, it wants to remind you that, you know, you are a survivor. And how are you going to be intellectually independent from all the drama? Uh, what is going on at the moment? And of course, Orcus is in the sign of Virgo at the moment. So uh, it very much relates to work, health related matters, uh, as well as uh, productivity overall. Orcus is sitting on 13, almost 14 degree at the moment, 13. Uh, 48 to be precise so guys this is kind of my interpretation on the upcoming uh, uh, new moon in the sign of aquarius i hope it helps you to navigate your life and then if you are curious about uh, how we can break it down to each of your uh, to each of your rising sign then you might want to be signing up for my uh, membership zone uh, which is uh, five pound a month on level one, and then I will be giving you about six videos a month with extra content. So thank you everyone and see you soon. Bye-bye.